Oh, it's been a while. Do I even know how to do this anymore? Can you speak into a microphone and look at the camera? How should I, how do you say hi? Hi, a few months ago, blood work came in revealing I had some crazy high ferritin levels. I was immediately defeated, deflated, and uh, honestly petrified. And then I thought, wait, um, what the heck is ferritin? Pronounce ferret. Tin. It is a protein container that holds iron until it's needed. Iron is a metal and an element that's essential for the production of healthy red blood cells. It's also something Arnold pumps. The most satisfying feeling you can get in the gym is the pump. It's as satisfying to me as uh, coming is. I'm like uh, getting the feeling of coming in the gym. I'm getting the feeling of coming at home. I'm getting the feeling of coming backstage when I pump up. So I'm coming day and night. Our bodies cannot produce iron, so we must absorb it through foods or supplements. Too much iron can have toxic effects and damage vital organs. Ferritin acts kind of like a buffer or reserve, holding onto excess or unused iron until it's needed. A common cause of high ferritin levels is a genetic condition called hemochromatosis, which is something you can test for. It's more common in people of Northern European descent, so it wasn't surprising mine came back negative. It is also referred to as an acute phase reactant, so it can rise during bouts of inflammation and is associated with metabolic syndrome or in cases of underlying liver disease. Why is knowing your ferritin levels important? Specifically, symptoms of iron overload include fatigue, weakness, abdominal pain, weight loss, libido loss. I'm coming day and night. I gotta wash my ears now. Gout, high blood sugar, more worrisome are possible long-term effects, arthritis, liver disease, including cirrhosis of the liver, diabetes, hypothyroidism, heart disease, pancreatitis, spleen damage, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and it may have an association with longevity as centenarians on average have low ferritin levels. In some studies, Reduced free iron in worms and fruit flies have demonstrated increased lifespan. So depending on the lab, standard ferritin ranges from 30.3 to 565.7 nanograms per milliliter. There is a debate if those ranges are still too high. A uh, Dartmouth professor suggested a ferritin level over 100 is uh, often associated with disease. I had a normal value of 293 nanograms per milliliter, and years later, I clocked in at 639 nanograms per milliliter. And five months after that, the value rose yet again to a stunning 1,226 nanograms per milliliter. The good news is I was able to lower those levels reflected in a recent test, but still high. With the high ferritin value, other tests that might be ordered include red blood count, how do you pronounce this stupid word? Um, hema, hematocrit, edit this out, Mike. Iron, total iron binding capacity, transferrin, which is kind of like a shuttle for a ferritin, ultrasound, ALTAs, T levels, all of which I did take and all of which came back normal. So how are most of us getting iron? Foods like potatoes, cashews, spinach, organ meats, shellfish, and red meat all contain iron. But perhaps lesser known, flour, cornmeal, and cereals are often fortified with iron. Daily multivitamin tabs also contain iron, as well as other metals you can't easily get rid of, like copper, which may be bad to accumulate. Remember, your body cannot naturally regulate iron levels. Most adult or senior uh, multivitamins come in iron-free form, so I'd look for those. Check this out, side note, I am very happy and confident with my medical team, but even with their best intentions, I was actually asked to take a multivitamin tab and they even recommended a brand that contained iron. And this was after my first flagged ferritin test. These multivitamin tabs also contain vitamin C, which enhances iron absorption. I had to point these things out and we, you know, didn't continue on with the uh, multi daily multivitamin. Um, but that's why I continue to say you have to take ownership of your health, no matter no matter how well intentioned, no one will be as invested into your well being as you. So, here's my personal hypothesis for my high ferritin levels. It's actually the cookware I've been using. I rarely eat all of the above mentioned foods, but for the past year, I have been cooking and eating two to three dishes uh, a day prepared specifically in a cast iron pan. I like the sear 
and nonstick nature and despise nonstick pans in general. Look at this freaking murder weapon. You tried to kill me. And I can get a little bit lazy with the stainless steel cookware maintenance, but I didn't realize that cast iron pans can leach six to eight milligrams of iron per meal into your food. So at up to three dishes a day, I was adding possibly 24 milligrams of iron per day. Be careful with that. Unless you're anemic, then you could consider the opposite of my suggestions. Most people can lose about one milligram of iron per day. Okay, so are there ways to get rid of excess or chelate iron and ferritin? The most common prescription for hemochromatosis is uh, phlebotomies. I didn't know what it was other than it didn't sound good. It's uh, consistent sessions of blood draws as much as weekly, often bi-weekly, and uh, in perpetuity for maintenance. For someone who hates needles, this was a nightmare scenario. This is, I mean, this is me every time I get blood drawn. I just, I can't, I can't even. It's also interestingly why high iron and ferritin is not commonly found in women under 60 because of menstruation. For those reasons, and if your physician won't prescribe a phlebotomy, frequent blood donations are kind of also suggested. There are chelation therapies using pills or injections, but are generally less effective than phlebotomies. Turmeric, specifically curcumin with pepperine, as well as an IP6 supplement, uh, chelates iron in multiple studies. Mung bean may also be an iron chelator. Coffee, likely due to the polyphenols and ideally taken with meals, as well as calcium rich dairy products can hinder the absorption of iron. Eggs contain a protein called phosphatin. Did I say that right? You gotta learn how to pronounce words, Mike. Phosphatin that binds to iron, which can also prevent the absorption of iron. One study showed that a short two-day fast significantly decreased iron, ferritin, and total iron binding capacity. However, more studies are needed to track its long-term effects. I will say fasting is widely known to improve inflammatory states in which chronic inflammation is correlated with high ferritin levels. So which of those things did I do and what were my latest results? I wasn't experiencing any noticeable sickness or inflammation, so remember that my previous ferritin value was 1,226 nanograms per milliliter. After a little over a month of a regimen of 450 milligrams of curcumin daily, loads of turmeric in my cooking, and complete ceasing use of the old cast iron pan. My values recently came in at 730 nanograms per milliliter. I also continued time-restricted feeding uh, with random two to three day fasts whenever I felt like it. I think the next step for me is since I had some success, I'll be adding uh, IP6 supplements because those values, while dramatically lower, are still extremely high. I may still need phlebotomies until these values get to within range. Even then, my physician may not want to continue it into the ideal range near 100 nanograms per milliliter. In that case, blood donations or I don't know, suddenly getting periods might be the only ways for me. And I'm also not sure which is more realistic. All right, so it's tough to wade through the noise. These days, it seems like everything is made to be of the utmost importance, and everything is the root cause to everything. I say it in my news feeds, it's D deficiency one week, then vitamin B. Coffee will make you live longer. Stress will kill you. A little wine is good for the heart. Any amount of alcohol will kill brain cells. We need more zinc. It's gluten. It's sleep. It's meat. This odd vegetable superfood cures cancer. The uh, consumerism aspect is just nuts and you can just about find a study or physician to support and practically any argument. What I think it does show is that we are complex systems and many things play a role. To what degree depends on the individual. So should you worry about ferritin and get a test? Well, men start accumulating iron after 18 years old and it does usually take quite a while to build up. So maybe if you're nearing 30 or a woman after menopause, I might consider a test. If you're dealing with fatigue, have insulin resistance, inflammatory symptoms, or metabolic syndrome, you might wanna have your ferritin levels checked. I'd also be cautious of the good old family cast iron cookware. Unless you have a deficiency, then it actually might be a valuable tool. 
I hadn't experienced any symptoms directly related to ferritin, and it wasn't even known to me what it was until my test results were flagged. I've come to learn that high levels can cause major damage to vital organs, and conversely, low levels are often associated with longevity. Even in cases analogous to mine, where everything else comes back normal and negative, having high ferritin levels is kind of like sitting on dynamite, where if glycated, can turn into major issues if they do in fact turn into free iron. The good news is even though your body cannot get rid of excess iron on its own, there are things you can do and things you can take to help chelate it. I'll put some helpful links in the description. I hope you like this video. I know it's been a while. We're back at it like a crack addict. Well, maybe not like a crack addict, it just rhymed. And if you didn't like this video, then I don't know, send it to someone you hate. Um, as always, be well, live well. Bye for now.